Uniform circular motion refers to, you guessed it, motion in a circle. So we'll spend the next couple of weeks on dealing with problems with objects moving in circles. I'm going to start by giving you a few definitions relative to circles, and then we'll get into some examples on how to solve problems dealing with uniform circular motion. So first we're going to start with the definition for uniform circular motion. And all this is is an object moving in a circle at a constant speed. So that's where the uniform comes in. I say constant speed as opposed to constant velocity because the object is always accelerating. It's accelerating because as something moves in a circle, the direction is changing. So even though speed stays constant, it has to be accelerating because of that change in direction. When we refer to speed, we're talking about the linear speed of the object as it moves in a circle, also sometimes called tangential. It's tangential because the direction, if we make this velocity as opposed to speed, direction is always going to be tangent to the circle. And I'm going to draw a picture in a few slides showing the direction of the speed and direction of acceleration. So just hold tight for what that looks like, but just know tangent is always the direction of that velocity. And we use speed because it's kind of always a given of what direction the object is moving. So for our equation, we know that speed is equal to a distance over a time. When we're dealing with circles, the distance is the circumference, and the time would be the period, and I will define what period is. So circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi times the radius over the period, and the symbol for period is capital T. So linear speed, or tangential speed, is equal to 2 pi r over t. Let me just write what these are. r is radius, t is period, and again I'm going to define this on the next slide, and v is your speed. So same symbol for the speed. So we've got two terms dealing with time when it comes to circles. The first would be period. This is the time it takes an object to, com an object to complete one cycle, revolution, rotation, whatever you want to call it, but any time an object takes to go around a circle. The symbol for period is a capital T. I know that doesn't make sense, but that's what we use, and period is the time. So anytime we're dealing with circular motion problems, instead of using a little lo lowercase t, we'll use a capital T. So period is the time whenever you're dealing with circles. And because it's a time, the unit would be seconds. Related to period is frequency, and frequency is the number of cycles around a circle completed in one second. And again, when I say cycles, it can be number of rotations, number of revolutions, just the t a number of times something goes around a circular path in one second. It's the inverse of period. So the symbol for frequency is a lowercase f, and the units are hertz. You can also use 1 over seconds, so again, inverse of period. If the unit for period is seconds, the unit for frequency is 1 over seconds. And you might also see revolutions per second. So again, revolutions per second, cycles per second, something like that. How many times something happens around a circle in one second. The equations for period and frequency, again, they're inverses of each other. So period equals 1 over the frequency and frequency equals 1 over the period. Pretty simple, you just have to be careful if you're reading a problem whether it gives you period or frequency so you know what you have to use in order to solve. And frequency, look, the units are just 1 over seconds because the period's units are seconds. This is 1 over 1 over seconds, so the units will come out to be seconds. So period equals 1 over the frequency and frequency equals 1 over the period. We won't be dealing with frequency too much until we get to waves, but in case you see it, this is what it refers to. So now we have centripetal acceleration. Because objects are always accelerating in circles, they have to have a centripetal acceleration. So they're not speeding up or slowing down, but the change in direction causes that acceleration. It's always going to be directed towards the center of a circle. So all centripetal acceleration is, is acceleration 
of an object moving in a circle and it's always directed towards the center. The symbol for centripetal acceleration is A with the subscript of C and the equation AC equals V squared over R. So it depends only on the speed and the radius of the circle. So V is speed, R is radius, and AC is our centripetal acceleration. So one way to help you remember that centripetal and centripetal acceleration is always directed towards the center is the definition of centripetal. So we have centripetal. And if we break this apart into century and pedal, this refers to center, and pedal refers to seeking or loving. So the word centripetal literally means center seeking or center loving. So if you have centripetal acceleration, it has to be directed towards the center. Okay, so now we come to centripetal force. This is the net force of an object in uniform circular motion. It exists because objects moving in a circle have an acceleration, and if something has an acceleration, Newton's second law tells us there must also be a net force. Again, look at the word, centripetal. It's in the same direction as acceleration, so it's towards the center of the circle. The symbol for centripetal force is F with a subscript of C, not to be confused with the contact force that we've used before. So FC for centripetal force, it's essentially net force in a circle. So because of that, centripetal force will not appear in a force diagram. It works the same way that net force does in that the centripetal force is directed wherever your forces are longer but you do not draw FC in a force diagram as the centripetal force. The equation for a centripetal force. So we know that net force is equal to mass times acceleration, so Newton's second law. So centripetal force is again the net force in circles, so FC is going to equal the mass times the centripetal acceleration. And we know that centripetal acceleration is equal to speed squared over radius. So centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r. But this will work as well. Again, because AC is centripetal acceleration, which is v squared over r. So write out what all of these are. So FC is our centripetal force. M is the mass. V is the speed. R is the radius. Or over here, it was the same thing. AC is your centripetal acceleration. And M is the mass. So again, centripetal force is the same thing as net force. It's just what we call the net force if you're dealing with circles. Centripetal means that it is center-seeking or center-loving. So just like centripetal acceleration, it's directed towards the center of a circle. I'm going to show you um, a diagram that should help you figure out what the direction of all three of these things are. And by three of these things, I mean the direction of the velocity, the direction of the centripetal acceleration, and then the direction of the centripetal force. Okay, so let's start with a circle. We have our circle, and we want to show our velocity, our acceleration, and our centripetal force. So I'm going to use three different colors. Let's do blue for velocity, red for acceleration, and purple for force. By definition, as an object moves around a circle, the velocity is going to be tangent to the circle. So tangent to the circle is this direction. 
That's a really bad line. Let's try this again. So any point I pick on the circle, the velocity is tangent to it. I'm going to just go all the way around, showing the direction of the velocity. So always tangent. If you take your ruler, you should hopefully know what a tangent line is by now. Go across. And notice how I'm trying to make my arrows all the same length. So the reason these are all the same length is because the speed is constant. So it's going the same speed the whole way around. And again, I did my best to make these the same length. What's changing is the direction, not how fast it's going. Next, we want to show the direction of the centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is always going to be towards the center of the circle. So it doesn't matter where I am in the circle, centripetal acceleration points towards the center. And because it only depends on the speed and the radius, the radius of your circle will stay constant as will the speed. The length of all of these arrows should stay the same. So my acceleration amount is going to be the same. It's the direction of it that changes. And again, the direction is based on where the center of the circle is at each point. And the last thing I want to show is my centripetal force. That's going to be in the same direction as the centripetal acceleration times whatever the mass is. So your centripetal force is still going towards the center of the circle. Since the mass of your object won't be changing, the length of the centripetal force should remain the same the whole time as well. So it's in the same direction of the acceleration towards the center of the circle and it's the same length the whole time. So speed or velocity are always tangent to the circle. Acceleration and force are always towards the center of the circle. I want to address one word that is usually used when it comes to circles, explain why it's wrong, and then we'll get into some examples. Okay, centrifugal force. This is fake. It's fictitious. It's a physics expletive. There is no such thing as a centrifugal force. It, because it's not an interaction between two objects. So a force is an interaction between two objects. This is not. There is absolutely nothing that pulls an object away from the center of a circle. The acceleration is directed towards the center. The centripetal force is directed towards the center. There is nothing pulling you away from the center of a circle. So what you actually feel is inertia. Inertia, again, is the tendency for an object to want to keep on doing what they're already doing. So Objects by nature want to move in a straight line. Your inertia is what makes you feel as though you are being pulled away from the circle because your object or your sorry your body or whatever object wants to move in a straight line. You have an outside force that pulls you towards the center of a circle. So centrifugal, if we look at the root words of this, century refers to again center. Fugal means fearing. So there is no center fearing force because forces are always directed towards the center. They love to go towards the center. If, you, uh, if you've ever been on the ride, the Gravitron at a carnival, you feel like you're being pushed back into the wall as it's rotating and going towards the circle. All that is is your body wanting to move in a straight line and the centripetal force pulling you in. So it's your body's resistance to moving into a circle. There's nothing actually pushing you away. So this is a bad word. We don't want to use it in physics class. Okay, I'm going to do the three examples, three of the four examples from your packet that say circular motion examples. I'll start with numbers one, two, and three, and we'll do four at a later time. So number one tells us that the second hand on a particular clock has a radius of 0 0.30 meters. We want to determine the second hand's period, frequency, and speed. So what we have here is a clock, and then we're looking at the second hand. It's moving around in a circle. 
and the radius of the second hand is 0 0.30 meters. So our given information, obviously radius, is 0 0.30 meters. Things we want to find. Part A is asking for the period. Part B is asking for the frequency. And Part C is asking for the speed. It's the second hand on a clock. So that's that longer hand that goes around the clock in 60 seconds. So that's going to answer part A pretty easily. The period is equal to 60 seconds because it takes 60 seconds to go around the circle once. Part B is asking for frequency. If you remember, frequency is the number of times something goes around a circle in one second. It's also the inverse of period. So frequency will equal 1 over the period, which is equal to 1 over 60 seconds. 1 divided by 60 is equal to 0 0.016, keeps on going, 1 over seconds. We've only got, uh, we have two sig figs here, so sorry, this was 60 point seconds up here. So two sig figs, the frequency is approximately equal to 0 0.017 second, one over seconds. And then part C is asking us for the speed. So if you remember, when dealing with circles, speed is equal to the distance of a circle, so 2 pi times the radius, the circumference over the time dealing with circles, period. So this is equal to 2 pi times 0 0.3 meters divided by 60 seconds. 2 pi times 0.3 divided by 60 is equal to 0 0.0314 keeps on going meters per second. So two sig figs, amount of room, I'll write it over here. The speed is approximately 0 0.031 meters per second. So pretty straightforward example, just looking for the more basic things with circles. Let's look at the next two. A bowling ball has a mass of 7.3 kilograms. If you move it around a circle with a radius of 0 0.75 meters at a speed of 2.5 meters per second, what force would you have to exert on it? So here we've got a bowling ball moving around in a circle. These diagrams are usually fairly straightforward, so the bowling ball is moving that way. What are we given? We know that the mass is 7.3 kilograms. The radius of the circle is 0 0.75 meters. And the speed is 2.5 meters per second. And it's asking us to find the force you would need to exert on it. In this case, the bowling ball is moving around in the circle. You've got a force directed this way at the bowling ball. So what we're looking for is whatever our centripetal force is. In this case, the centripetal force would be your net force, because if we look at a force diagram, the way I drew my picture, you're going to have some kind of contact force. So let me just show that this is contact, not centripetal force. You're going to have some kind of contact force exerted on the bowling ball to get it to go towards the center of the circle. However, that will equal your centripetal force because it's the only force on the bowling ball in that direction. We know that centripetal force is equal to the mass times the speed squared divided by the radius. We were given mass, radius, and speed. So just plug the numbers in. We get 7.3 kilograms times 2.5 meters per second, this is squared, divided by 0 0.75 meters. This is a fairly straightforward equation. The biggest mistakes I see for getting to square this and making sure that the radius is in fact in meters. So if you remember a force's unit is a newton, you need the units to reduce down to kilogram times meters per second squared. This meter cancels out that meter, so you end up with kilograms meter per second squared uh, once the units all cancel. I'm putting all these numbers in 
7.3 times 2.5 squared divided by 0.75 equals 60.83 keeps on going newtons. And this was two sig figs. So the force you have to exert on it, we're looking for the contact force, which is equal to the centripetal force in this case, is approximately 61 newtons. Okay, and we've got one more example. A fishing line has a weight on the end of it with a mass of 0.028 kilograms, a length of 0.75 meters, and a period of 1.2 seconds. What is the centripetal force? So here we've got a fishing line, there's a weight on the end of it, and it's moving around in a circle. Our given information is that the mass of that weight is 0 0.028 kilograms. The length of the line, so the radius of this circle, is 0 0.75 meters. And the period is 1.2 seconds. And we're looking for centripetal force. We know that centripetal force is equal to m v squared over r. We were given mass, we were given radius, we were not given speed. However, we know that when dealing with circles, the speed is equal to the circumference 2 pi r over the period. We have radius and we have period, so what we can do is figure out what speed is and then plug that back into here. So the speed is equal to 2 pi times 0 0.75 meters divided by 1.2 seconds. This equals 1.5, 0 keeps on going, meters per second. Coming now over to my centripetal force equation, Fc equals the mass 0 0.028 kilograms times my unrounded speed. So we want to use the unrounded number. 1.50 keeps on going meters per second squared divided by the radius 0 0.75 meters. Multiplying all of this out we get centripetal force equal to 0 0.575 keeps on going newtons with two sig figs, centripetal force is approximately equal to 0 0.58 newtons. I know this was a lot. I know this was a, quite a few examples and quite a few definitions, but you need to make sure that you understand everything there is about circular motion in terms of what direction is the velocity, what direction is the acceleration, what direction is the force, why do we have a force, and then how this all comes together. We'll be working on some practice tomorrow just with the more basics, and then we'll get into a lot more math and problem solving later on.